In this video, we're going to take a look at dividing and simplifying complex numbers. First of all, we should remember that when we have complex numbers, a key thing that we have is the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. Okay, remember, that's where we start and we end up with all of our complex numbers, that imaginary thing to take care of those negative square roots. F flowing from this, we have i squared being equal to negative 1. And if we notice, that comes from, if we were to square both sides of this, if we square that, we get i squared. If we square this, remember the square root and squaring are inverse operations, so we end up with just negative 1. So, we're going to be able to use this to allow us to do some simplification and take care of uh, situations like we see here. So, let's take a look at this first one. In this case, we're doing some division, and we have to remember now an i. Well, i is really a square root, and remember, we can't leave square roots in the denominator, so we have to deal with that. We can't have an i in the denominator in the same way that we can't have a square root in the denominator for something to be totally simplified. So how we're going to deal with that is what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the complex conjugate. And remember, the complex conjugate has the opposite sign on the imaginary part. The real part stays the same. We have the opposite sign on the imaginary part. And I want you to see, uh, to notice here what happens. So we're going to multiply by 1 minus 8i on the top and bottom of this. 1 minus 8i. Okay, then let's start on the bottom. And since we're multiplying this, we're going to have to FOIL this out. So we have 1 minus plus 8i times 1 minus 8i. And then on the top, we've got some stuff we need to FOIL as well. Okay, so we have 1 times 1. It's going to be 1. 1 times minus 8i. It's minus 8i. 8i times 1 is plus 8i. And then we've got 8i times minus 8i, which would be negative 64i squared. Okay, so that's on the bottom. Then on the top, we have negative 3 times 1 would be negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 8i is going to be plus 24i. And then we've got 7i times 1 would be plus 7i. And then 7i times negative 8i is going to be negative 56i squared. Okay, now, we want to be on the lookout for those i squareds because we can simplify those things. So, let's see. On the top here, well, that i squared, remember, is equal to negative 1. So I can replace this with negative 1, and since I don't have a ton of room here, I'm going to kind of do some of this in my head, and we're going to have, then, negative 3... I'm going to combine like terms, so negative 3, and then this is 56 times negative 1, which is going to make this plus 56, okay? So plus 56 here, minus 3, is going to give us 53, and then we combine the i pieces, so 24i plus 7i is going to be plus 31i, okay? And we can have i's on the top, that's okay. Then, notice what happens on the bottom. Because we multiplied by the complex conjugate, these i terms are opposites of each other, and those cancel out. Okay, minus 8i plus 8i, the i's are all gone. But over here we have an i squared. Well, remember that that's negative 1. So we have negative 64 times negative 1 makes this positive 64. Combine that with the 1 that's over here, and this whole thing is going to be over 65, like so. Okay. Now, we should write complex numbers in the form a plus bi. So we really should separate this into the two pieces. 
remembering that when we're dividing by 65 with a fraction bar like this, it's really 53 divided by 65 and 31i divided by 65. So my final answer is going to be 53 over 65 plus 31i over 65. Okay, so I have my real part and my imaginary part. Okay, so we can't leave an i on the bottom to get rid of it. We'll multiply by that complex conjugate. Okay, let's try another one of these, see how we can do here. Okay, for this one, it's not quite as complicated on the bottom. We just have a 3i. So what I want to do is multiply by the conjugate which is negative 3i. So I'm going to multiply by negative 3i on the top and bottom. So negative 3i, and then multiply by negative 3i on the top and bottom. Remember that this is just creatively multiplying by 1, really. So on the top, well, I'm going to have to distribute that through because I've got that whole thing and this over here. So I'm going to have to distribute that through to each piece. So that becomes negative 3i times 2 be negative 6i and then we've got negative 3i times 4i that's going to be negative 12 and then i times i is i squared okay on the bottom we end up with negative 3 times 3 would be negative 9 and then that i times i is going to be i squared okay Hey, we got some i squareds there. Remember right up here that that's negative 1. So, and this one I'll write out a little bit more detail than I did in the one above. So we have negative 6i, and then remember that this piece is negative 1. So it's minus 12 times negative 1, like so. And then on the bottom, I have minus 9i squared. Hey, there's that i squared thing again. Remembering that that's negative 1, so negative 9 times negative 1, like so. And then finally I can finish up the simplification, and I want to write it, the a plus bi, so I'll write the real part first, so that's going to be negative 12 times negative 1 would be 12. Then we've got minus 6i all over negative 9 times negative 1 would be 9. Then we can do some simplification here, remembering that we can break it up into those two pieces. So 12 over 9, well, we could divide both those by 3. So the real part would be 4 thirds. And then we have minus 6i over 9. Well, we can divide both those by 3. So that would be 2i over 3. So minus 2i over 3, like so. Okay. So again, the key with division is to make sure that we get rid of the i from the denominator because we can't have that square root. Because remember, i is really that square root of negative 1. Okay, so now, when we have i to larger powers, how are we going to deal with that? Well, the first thing that we want to do is write the i to an even power. So, well, you say, how can I do that? Well, remember that when we multiply things with powers like that, we add the exponents. So I'm going to break this up into negative 4 times i times i to the 12th. Okay, so notice what I did. I just took one of those i's out of this group, set it over here, because that would be i to the first, and 1 plus 12, well, that'd be 13. So that's the same thing. Okay, so now this i to the 12th, my next step is going to be to write that with an i squared. Well, how can we do that? Well, remember that if we have a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. So I'm going to put i squared here, and then I'm going to take that to whatever is going to get me that 12th. Well, if I take that to the 6th power, it would be 2 times 6 would be i to the 12th. Okay? So basically, I've creatively rewritten that i to the 13th like this so that I can do some simplification. Now, remember, i squared is just negative 1. So, 
Let's rewrite this. We have negative 4i, and then this i squared is just negative 1, so that's negative 1 to the 6th power. Okay, now, remember that that really means negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 6 times. Well, if we have an even power, a negative number to an even power, we're going to end up with a positive because the negatives, negative times a negative, gives us a positive. In this case, we really have three of those pairs, so it's all going to be positive. So this negative 1 to the 6th is just 1, so that whole thing is 1 times this thing, so I just end up with negative 4 times i. Okay, So negative 4 times i to the 13th is really the same as negative 4 times i. Okay, let's look at this one here where we have several different things and then there's some addition and subtraction. Well, first thing I want to do to simplify these i's is make sure that they're even powers. So this one's an even power already, so I don't have to pull any single i's out of there. So what I can do is just go i squared and to what power is going to get me that 24 back? Well, to the 12th, okay? Because remember, power to a power, we multiply those exponents. So that's really just i to the 24th. We just wrote it uh, creatively. Okay, then, this piece, I'm going to have to do some work with that one, because it's to the 13th. Well, we did that work up here, so let's make use of that again. We're going to pull that i out of there, and then it's going to be i times i to the 12th, and remember that i to the 12th we separate out to be this. So I'm going to jump right to that step, so we have i squared to the 6th. Okay, so that's this piece right here. If we combined it back together, 2 times 6 would be i to the 12th, times i is i to the 13th. Okay, then, hey, there's another i to the 12th, so that's this piece right here. So we have plus i squared, and how are we going to get that 12th? Well, that would be to the 6th power. 2 times 6, that's i to the 12th. Okay, so now let's go back and start cleaning up. So this, remember, i squared, the reason we did that is because we know i squared is equal to negative 1. So change that i squared to negative 1, so we have negative 1 to the 12th power, then we have minus i, and then this is negative 1 to the 6th power, and then finally we have negative 1 to the 6th power again, so plus negative 1 to the 6th. Now, if we remember, a negative to an even power is going to be a positive number, so what we end up with is, this is just going to be 1 to the 12th, which is just 1. This piece, negative 1 to the 6th power, well, that's just going to be 1. So I have a minus i there, don't lose that. And then finally this one is going to be, well, negative 1 to the 6th, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, 6 times, is just 1, so plus 1, okay? Then, finally, combine like terms, so we have a 1 and a 1, so that's going to give us 2 minus i. So this whole crazy thing simplifies to just 2 minus i. All right, dividing and simplifying complex numbers, a couple key things to remember. First of all, remember this piece, all this complex and imaginary number stuff hinges right here. The square root of negative 1 equals i. And then if we square both sides, we get this piece, which is really helpful as we simplify these things. Look for those i squared terms, which we can then replace with negative 1. Remember that we write complex numbers in the form a plus bi, so we use that. And then to get rid of the i, we can't have an i in the denominator because that's really a square root, so we have to rationalize that, remember. To do that, we multiply by the complex conjugate, and then what happens is the i terms become opposites. So those cancel out. We have an i squared term, which we use that negative 1 to get rid of. And then simplify, 
and break it up into the two pieces so that we have A, the real part, like this, plus the B, which is the imaginary part. Okay? So on the lookout for those I squared things. If we have an I to some larger power, the first thing we want to do is get it so I is to an even power. So pull one out if you need to, so that we have something like that. Then, remember, a power to a power, we multiply those things. So we're going to put I squared to some larger power that gets us this number. Okay? Then we replace the I squared with negative 1, because that's what it is, and simplify that, and off we go. Hope this was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. Imaginary numbers aren't so bad. You can do it.